All right, chapter 11, section 7, surface areas and volumes of spheres. This is the last section of chapter 11, the last lecture day for Math 2 in general. So let's jump into it. This is going to be split up into two topics, much like it was in section 6. Surface area being the unwrapped version of this three-dimensional object, how much area in square units will make up the material that covers this. Since we're dealing with spheres, the most obvious connection there will be to think of a ball, right? Um, a baseball or a tennis ball or softball will be something that I'm referencing here as well because the seams along that softball, um, I'll, I'll talk about how we can unravel that to make that object. Um, and the formula here for surface area of a sphere is a little simpler than some of the other ones we've come across with different three-dimensional objects. There's no fraction involved, but we do have an exponent. Um, and then in the later clip in, in this uh, section, we'll talk about volume or the space inside of that sphere. So again, if we're talking about a ball, if it's an inflated ball, like a basketball uh, or a, like a, a pickleball or something like that, then it'll be air, the amount of air that goes in that. Uh, if it's a solid ball, like a baseball, golf ball, softball, tennis, uh, tennis ball would be inflated. Uh, but any of those, then it'd be the amount of material on the inside. Okay, so here in clip number one, let's talk about surface area of a sphere. Again, surface area is one of those most abstract concepts when it comes to geometry in general. For a lot of students, it's difficult enough to imagine a three-dimensional object, particularly the more difficult three-dimensional objects. So the sphere is a little bit more tangible for us. Um, but it's one thing to imagine and or draw a three-dimensional object. It's another thing entirely to unravel that object, to assemble it into what it would be if I were to like spread that out on a two-dimensional surface like my desk. Okay. And the simplest connection that we can make here actually involves a baseball, softball, tennis ball. The, they all have similar seam markers on them. And so if you can visualize uh, those, uh, those sports balls, uh, you can imagine the seams going around those, that baseball, softball, tennis ball, whatever it might be. Those seams, if I were to unravel it and, and break it apart, it's actually two pieces of material that are stitched together. Those two pieces look like this up here in the upper right hand corner, right? So if you've ever seen the sand lot, when they knock the wrapping off the, the baseball and stuff like that, it basically breaks up into these two leather pieces, right? This is basically the surface area of every sphere. Um, I mean, you can break it up in lots of different ways and stuff, but this is probably the easiest one to latch on to. Uh, now, I'm not going to test you on where this formula comes from, how it's derived or anything like that. Uh, for us, that's just to help us visualize a three-dimensional object, something as complicated as a sphere, a completely curved surface, uh, breaking up into a fully two-dimensional, just stretched out surface area. That's just to help us visualize it. For us, it's going to suffice just to know what the formula is for solving the surface area, the amount of material for this, this ball. And that's shown here with this formula. Surface area, capital S, is going to equal 4 pi times r, the radius of the sphere squared. This formula actually in and of itself supports the fact that we're dealing with area being a two-dimensional measurement in square units. You'll notice here on the right-hand side, uh, the only variable I have, r, uh, would be some distance, a distance from the center of the, the ball to its outer edge. Um, that would be in some units of measurement, some distance, feet, inches, centimeters, whatever it might be. And when I square it, that, uh, that unit becomes squared, which makes sense because for area, I have square units. So the formula itself actually supports it. And here's where, again, I want to just talk through how you would end up using this formula. Uh, again, students tend to get pretty hung up on this pi. Pi is an actual real number. It is not a variable. Pi is 3.14, yada, 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 yada. Um, but that being said, that's also going to affect our answers, that there will be an exact version of an answer, and there's fundamentally going to be some approximated versions of an answer. But the nice thing about this formula, as with most formulas involving circles, there's only a couple variables that we need to worry about. Namely, we'll either be solving for surface area, or we'll be given a surface area and solving for the other variable. The only other variable here is R being the radius. And so just a quick side note on that. Um, I've talked about this through chapter 10 and, and several of the sections that we've seen this pop up as well. Uh, there's a lot of different ways they can give me information about radius without explicitly giving me radius. 
for instance, they could tell me the, tell me the diameter of a circle, in which case I take that diameter length and cut it in half to find radius. Or they could give me the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r. I would divide both sides by 2 pi to find out r radius. So there are different ways that they can tell me something about radius without them telling me radius. We'll see that worked out in a couple of examples right now. But that will end up being the punchline, this formula right here, the punchline of this first uh, portion of this section. Volume will have its own formula that will have cubic units, and we'll see that reflected in the formula as well. But let's move on with surface area. So here's a couple of quick examples of things that you're going to come across. The first one, part A, is going to be about as straightforward as it gets. You need to solve for surface area, capital S in the formula. Fundamentally, I need R. That's the only thing technically I need. So if I'm explicitly told what R is, I'm literally just taking that value and plugging it in, doing the calculator work done. Part B is a little less straightforward, a little less direct. In this case, they have told me in part B, the circumference of the ball, the sphere. And I'm going to plug that into the left-hand side of the equation to solve for the radius of uh, the right-hand side. And then that will help me with solving the surface area. So let's jump to the whiteboard to solve these two quick examples. Let's move on with that. All right. Part A. We're given the following sphere. And in this one, they give us the simplest form of this information. Here's the center of the sphere, the center of the ball, three-dimensionally. Distance to the edge, that's going to be our radius. In this case, they told us it's eight inches. So fundamentally, the, rate, the units here are in inches. When I solve for surface area, it's going to be in square inches. It's the amount of material that would make up this ball. So if you imagine this being... One of those, um, those like a super ball, a bouncy ball, whatever it might be. It'd be the amount of plastic needed to make the exterior of that ball with an eight inch radius. Okay, so in this case, if I'm solving for surface area, I simply have to know what the formula is. And here's the benefit. As long as you write this down in your notes, you don't have to memorize it. Four pi r squared. I'm solving for surface area s. So all I need here is radius r. That happens to be the piece of information I'm given. When you come across this, it's literally plug it in, do the calculator work. So I plug in the eight, just do it quickly. Four pi, eight inches is in place for that, um, for that radius length. I'm gonna square it. Now here's just the one thing to be careful of here. It's tempting for a lot of students to just try and go left to right, like reading a book. So they do four times 3.14 times eight, and then square that result. The problem is, is that your calculator is dumb. It's going to basically read that in a different order than maybe you're intending. Um, order of operations dictates that I have to do this piece first. In PEMDAS, I have to deal with exponents before anything else. Uh, though, first parentheses than exponents. But in, in this case, in this problem, I have to deal with this exponent before anything else. So 8 times 8, 8 squared is 64. You can confirm that in the calculator. And so then I can end up multiplying. At this point, when I multiply, it doesn't matter what order I multiply this in um, at that point. But the very first thing to take care of would have been that squared element. So just be careful you're doing that first in your calculator. At this point, I'm just multiplying these together. So if I'm keeping this in exact form, I want to keep pi as pi because that's a what we call a infinite decimal. Like there is, I can't round it. I have to round it down to some place in order to shorten it because uh, it goes on for forever. So when I multiply 4 and 64, I'll get 256. 256 pi technically would be the exact form of the surface area of this ball, this sphere. If I had to round this to the nearest hundredth, which will more often than not be what I'm supposed to do, uh, I would simply multiply that 256 times the 3.14 for pi, and that comes out to about 803.84. The units here were in inches, and since I'm dealing with an area, that's square inches for a two-dimensional measurement. Pretty quick and painless in that case. Again, literally, if I'm given a radius, I'm just plugging that in for R, doing the quick calculator work, you'll end up with something like this. And yes, your, your numbers will get big really fast. All right, so that's part A. Let's see part B, where something a little less direct is given to me as far as information goes. In part B, again, I'm asked to find the surface area of a given sphere. 
The difference here is, is what information I'm told about that sphere. And so in this case, I'm given the circumference or distance around the sphere. And this circumference, they tell me, is 12 pi feet. A one-dimensional measurement because circumference fundamentally is just a distance. It's if you were to kind of measure with a, like a flexible measuring tape around uh, this sphere, around this ball, that would give you a length, a one-dimensional length fundamentally. And the fact that they've left pi in here just means that this, this is still a number. I could multiply 12 times 3.14. Resist the temptation to do that because ultimately when I try and convert this into radius, the pi is going to end up, end up canceling. And if you are, are of the habit of immediately plugging in 3.14, you're fundamentally approximating things early on. And particularly with big ideas, the more times you approximate, the more times you um, round numbers, uh, the less accurate your answer is. So first off, they are asking me here for surface area. So nothing's changing actually about that formula. Surface area still equals four pi times r squared. That is still true. And so if I'm asked to solve for the capital S surface area of this ball, you'll notice that capital C circumference is nowhere in this formula. So I need to somehow convert that circumference into this radius r. Thankfully, there is an equation that does that. Hopefully, remember, this is kind of considered expected knowledge now, but circumference is equal to the following formula, 2 pi times radius. That's what circumference of any circle is. And so the fact that I'm given a circumference of 12 pi, I can substitute that 12 pi in for that capital C. So when I plug that in, 12 pi, the circumference of that circle, is going to equal 2 pi times radius, meaning I can solve for radius. You've heard me mention a couple times, anytime I'm given a circumference, I'm just dividing by 2 pi. This is why. Um, because in this case, if I'm trying to solve for that radius, I would divide both sides by that 2 pi because it's being multiplied by the, the radius. The reason we do this inver inverse operation, you'll notice here that these cancel out. It's the whole reason we do an inverse operation. Over here, you'll notice that the pi's cancel as well. That's why we don't put 3.1 in four right away. And what I'm left with here on the left-hand side is 12 over two. Well, that reduces to six. And you'll notice we've officially solved for or gotten R by itself here on the right. So the radius of this sphere, the distance from the center to its edge, based on that circumference value, we're able to come up with six. The units here are feet, so technically six feet from the center of the sphere to its edge. Well, that's important because now I can actually use that value to plug in here for surface area. So at this point, now it's exactly like part A. Here is radius, plug it in, do your calculator work. Just be careful to do your squared element first. So let's go ahead and plug and play with that. All right, so I know radius is six feet. So again, surface area of the sphere is four pi times that radius squared. Well, the radius here is six feet. We just solve for that. So when I do that six squared, again, the only thing I have to be careful of at this point is I have to make sure I do my exponent first. So six squared or six times six is 36. Now I'm going to multiply that result by 4 pi, and that will give me my surface area. And 36 times 4, just to put it in exact form first, is 144 pi. So surface area is 144 pi. Again, the units here are in feet, so this is surface area being square feet. And again, if I had to round to the nearest hundredth or two decimal places, I would now multiply it by 3.14. 452.16, so approximately 452.16 square feet of material to make this sphere based on that circumference and ensuing radius. Again, the one tricky thing here was that I had to first convert to a quick pre-step to figure out what R was. Again, this is pretty typical of some of the trickier problems where they don't tell you ra uh, radius explicitly out front. Instead, they give you something that you can then solve for radius to then plug in into the equation. That was one of the more complicated ones. A simpler one would be like, here's the diameter, find the radius. You would simply cut that value in half. It's a much faster calculation. But that will conclude this first clip. 
Uh, in the next clip, we'll deal with uh, here's a diameter or solve for a diameter based on a surface area.